tonight I've popped out to do a bit of astrophotography and specifically Milky Way astrophotography, which is not something I've done for quite some time. So I may well be a little bit rusty, but I'm really excited to get out and give it a try again. Um, we've had a really beautiful period of high pressure over the last few days with crystal clear nights with not a cloud to be seen anywhere. I don't know if you can see behind me, but it's absolutely perfect tonight. But I do have a challenging situation at hand here. My usual go-to lens for astrophotography is the Samyang 14mm f2.8 manual focus lens. And I've had that for about five or six years now and it's absolutely incredible for astrophotography. However, I haven't used that lens for some time and a couple of nights ago, I tried to shoot it um, on my Z7 with the FTZ adapter, and it was just having absolutely none of it. The aperture was switching between f2.8 and f9 constantly. I kept on getting lens errors. It just was a nightmare. So after doing a little bit of um, searches online, it looks like the Samyang is not really compatible with the Z series bodies, which is a real shame. So tonight, I do not have my usual go-to lens. So it's time for plan B. So what is my plan B, you may well be asking. Well, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but this is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. And I purchased this during the summer to start experimenting with other non-landscape photography sort of niches like portraiture, events, etc. I know sacrilege, don't worry, I'm not gonna turn into a portraiture channel or anything. Um, but I've primarily bought that to, to dabble around in those sort of niches and it's incredible for those razor sharp and that super wide fast aperture just makes it an absolute pleasure to use. But I never really thought of it as an astrophotography lens, which is a bit daft really because that that wide aperture of f1.4 makes it perfectly well suited to astrophotography so tonight i'm going to give this a go and see what i can get out of it shooting the night sky just behind me The torch is out, light is dropping very, very rapidly. These astrophotography vlogs are so hard to film. Trust me, they're a nightmare. Um, tonight I'm gonna to be shooting the tree that you can see just behind me here. And without doubt, this is one of the most photogenic trees on the entire island. It's a tree that I love to take pictures of, but strangely enough, I've never taken an astrophotography image of this tree, which is strange really, because it lends itself very well to that beautiful silhouette against an empty sky here without any other sort of distractions in the background really. Should work pretty well, I think. Um, I'd love to say that this tree is in a really wild, windswept, remote location, but it's just not. There's, there's a main road, <laughs> literally about 20 meters that way. So you're probably gonna hear a lot of traffic whizzing by. Hopefully that doesn't distract you too much. Now, usually for astrophotography, I like to shoot as wide as possible. And there's two main reasons for that. One, it helps you get as much of the night sky and the stars and the Milky Way into your composition. And two, you can run out your shutter speeds for longer durations, which um, enables you to expose your shots more easily. And that's to do with the rotation of the earth and the star trailing in your images due to the 500 rule. Using that rule, usually I can shoot for something like 30 seconds pretty easily um, on 14 mil without too much star movement. Now, obviously going to 35 mil, that changes the story entirely. I'm going to have to take a different approach to how I expose my images. And also probably more impactful for that is gonna be how it changes the field of view for the night sky. Um, it's gonna be a far more restricted in terms of that. So according to photo pills, the Milky Way's galactic core is going to make a very brief 20 minute appearance above the horizon around about here and that should start approximately about half nine that's when astronomical twilight ends and we get proper darkness falling so 
the window of opportunity to shoot the Milky Way at its best is going to probably be from about half nine through to ten. Then the Milky Way core starts to sink below the horizon again and generally that's one of the most photogenic regions so I may as well try and shoot it when as much of it is above the horizon as possible. To be fair I'm kind of shooting uphill here so I'm probably not going to see as much of it as if I was at the coast for example shooting straight out over the sea but hey you've just got to work with what you're given. So that's me done, my shooting window is over. The Milky Way will deteriorate through the rest of the night now as the galactic core sinks below the horizon. And early signs are on the back of my LCD. I think I managed to get the shot. No thanks to all of these bloody cars going past. It's been an absolute nightmare trying to get this shot. I mean, I don't know what's going on today, but hundreds of cars going down that road and it's just been a case of trying to time off my shots when there's no traffic going by. It's just been an absolute nightmare, but um, enough of the moaning. Um, rather than explain my approach that I've taken with the shot, etc., composition settings, etc., here in the middle of a field in complete darkness with this stupid red torch on my head, I think instead I'm going to head home, get a bit of sleep, and I'll see you at my desk in my office where I'll explain all and hopefully, hopefully the image looks as good on my computer screen as it does on the back of the camera. See you shortly. It's actually a few days later now, but I have to say I'm absolutely delighted how this image has turned out and it really has blown my expectations completely out of the water. In terms of settings for this, using the 500 rule on the 35mm focal length, that would give a max aperture guideline of 14 seconds, but usually I like to shoot just a little bit under that max guideline. Um, so for this image, I shot this at 10 seconds. That also had the added benefit of reducing the risk of car headlights creeping into the actual scene. Um, I also shot this at ISO 3200 and the max aperture of 1.4. Now, I was a little bit nervous about shooting at that max aperture because I thought potentially sharpness could suffer quite significantly. But I have to say, this lens... <laughs> is so superb and the sharpness at its max aperture is very very impressive and I don't think it suffered all that much. Yes if I'd stopped down to 1.8 or 2.2 the image probably would be sharper but I wouldn't be sucking in as much of that very valuable light as I could and generally speaking of astrophotography I want to capture as much light as I possibly can because it makes my job in post-production so much more easier. Um, so I have to say, at 1.4, this is absolutely incredible. And actually, the following night, I went out again to a local dark sky site, um, a local lighthouse, and shot this image that you see on screen now. And again, it just reinforced how incredible this lens is. The light pollution was particularly bad at, at this spot, but the detail that it picked up in the Milky Way and across my foreground lighthouse was just absolutely exquisite. Shooting with longer focal lengths like the 35 does come with some inherent challenges. Because of the 500 rule, generally speaking, you want to be shooting with lenses that have got wider apertures, so the likes of your 1.8s and 1.4s, because that will help expose your image more easily and make up for some of that lost exposure time with your shutter speed. Uh, and generally those kind of lenses tend to be a bit more pricey, so they can hurt your wallet. Overall, shooting the 1.4 at 10 seconds versus a 2.8 at 30 seconds, the exposures are pretty similar. I believe this is sucking in slightly more light, but not too much. But if I was shooting something like a 2.2 or 2.8 3.5, 
then obviously my life would be a lot more tricky without something like a tracking mount, for example. Also with these telephoto lenses, I feel they're more difficult to use for astrophotography because generally with an extreme wide angle lens like a 14 mil, by and large, you can just generally point it in the direction of the Milky Way and you'll get it in the scene. Now, obviously that's not gonna make for a good shot, but it's more easy to frame your foreground and midground elements with the night sky behind them. With this, the field of view is far more restrictive. So I had to put quite a lot of planning and thought before I actually went out into the field when capturing the image you can see behind me and the lighthouse image. I needed to think about how far I stood away from those objects and what the best time of the evening would be to get to the foreground and the Milky Way in perfect alignment. One other thing, when shooting these longer focal lengths at super wide apertures like 1.4, I do feel that focus is more difficult in the scene and the margin for error is a lot smaller and literally tiny microscopic movements on the focus ring would make dramatic differences in the actual image. And I had a lot of difficulty trying to get maximum sharpness in the stars and my foreground objects, but I did finally get it. But it's definitely more difficult than shooting something like a 14 mil f2.8, for example. I have to say, this is an absolute game-changing moment for me. And this is what I love about photography. I've been doing photography for donkey's years now. Probably not as long as a lot of you out there, but for me, it's been over a third of my life I've been doing photography. And you never stop learning. And I just love these moments where you just, suddenly something just clicks in your head and it totally changes your perspective. Because for years I held the mentality that really with astrophotography it's about shooting as wide as possible or it's not really worth bothering. And that is completely bogus. It's just not true at all. And using this 35 has completely changed my perspective on that and it's broadened my horizons on how I approach astrophotography going forwards. So much so that the Samyang, I'm going to sell it. And um, for the foreseeable future, for now, this is gonna be my go-to astrophotography lens. Yes, it's more difficult to use, and yes, you need to put more planning into it, but the brutal truth is, this is a better astrophotography lens than the Samyang, because the sharpness and lens performance on this is so much better, and, if I wanted to, in theory, if I get my methodology down right, I can stitch together numerous 35mm shots to emulate a 14mm focal length. So really, as long as this is wielded correctly, in theory, this should give me everything I need. That's not to say that I wouldn't like another wide-angle fast prime. I mean, the 20mm 1.8Z from Nikon does look rather tasty, but for now, I think I'm just gonna stick with this. So in summary, don't shun the longer focal lengths for astrophotography, your 24s, your 35s, even your 50s. Yes, they'll greatly restrict your field of view, but within that field of view, you'll render and capture incredible detail, you really will, and for me, it's totally transformed the way that I'm going to approach astrophotography going forwards. I hope this video has been useful and has maybe opened some eyes out there potentially, or maybe I'm just very, very late to the 35 party. Um, but if you've got any thoughts on using lenses like this for astrophotography, please pop them down below in the comments. Um, again, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, click below and I'll see you all soon. Take care.